Hi everyone, it's Linda with StampWithLindaWalsh.com. I wanted to show you another part of our baby series. and this one, we're going to make a cute little bib card. Um, let's get started. So what I used was the Circle Scallop Die. Um, this is retired, but Stampin' Up! also now came out with the... Um, the framelit, so and that has a scallop in there too. So you can use either or. Um, how I cut it was you're gonna cut your paper to eight. You know how you take your eight and a half by. Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the dimensions. But anyways, it's five and a half by eight and a half is this piece, and then you're gonna score at four and a quarter. So it's just basically the same card. Um, eight and a half by eleven. Gee, I just drew a blank. Uh, so the, anyways. You're going to cut it eight and a half by 11 and a half, and then you make your regular size card. You're going to fold it, score it at four and a quarter. This, um, I lined up, and it's going to be a little crooked because I wanted to have, let me get you a piece here. I wanted to have my um, actual card end on each solid, you know, full scallop. So basically, it's going to go like this. I'm using two different colors. Um, this is Soft Sky, and then I have this base as a um, Bashful Blue. And that's only because Bashful Blue is now not in anymore. So I wanted to um, give you guys the Soft Sky one since that's our color, our current color. But I am making with my leftovers my Bashful Blue. Uh, and there I have one, two, three, four, five, six full scallops on top that I cut out. Um, that I left alone. So you're going to place that creased line below your actual top of your circle. And that's so it won't get cut. <clears throat> so then you'll have that crease. So there you go. That is how that's done. So I left out six of the circles. Um, I don't have the other framelit die, so I don't know how many for you to, to leave. But what you want to try and achieve is to have enough room for your scallop, um, your bib neckline. All right, and then this basically just pick a circle that's going to fit where you like it. You might want more of a rim showing, so it'll make your circle smaller. Um, this I just found I like this, and then we're going to outline our paper. This is actually it's funny. One of my um, club members uh, picked up a package of DSP for three bucks. This used to be one of the I think it was one of the in colors, and then they took it away as usual. And then when they revamped their um, their color scheme. They added it back in. So someone had this for sale, so I just used the inline for that. Um, so let's get started on, this is a seven piece, seven inch piece of uh, the, the ribbon there with the stitch ribbon. The stamps that I used, Baby Prince, love the set. So all three of our products will use this set. Um, let's get going with the actual stamping. Basically what I'll do first though is I'll cut out my circle. The um, reason why I want to do that is I want to make sure I have enough room for my hand prints. I basically went in, make sure it's even on both sides. You can, I would rather you go in short, um, I'm going to do this for you anyways club members, but if you're doing it on your own, go in less than halfway because you can always um, go in further if you need to. Because I just want you to make sure you have enough for your your neckline and your ribbon. Alright, so let's see here. Let's try this. So that was a little bit less than a half. Alright, and then um, what I did to create these circles is now like I said I don't have the framelits with the circles because I already have them from another company so I'm not gonna to get them again I mean you know it's kind of crazy I know Stampin Up has the same products as other companies how I got this neckline is the same way we did it with our um, baby rattle card you're gonna go in this is the one and three quarter inch punch basically the rule of thumb is to match use the same punch as you did for the neckline so then you're your piece will fit. Okay? So don't go doing a smaller piece. You have to use the same punch. You're going to go in, punch out your piece. This is the bashful blue. Then you're going to take your framelit, or if you have a big enough punch like we did in the rattle, you can use two punches. Um, and then run it through the big shot like this. And that's how I got 
our little neckline here, like like so. So let's go back to this. I'm going to um, place it on there. You can either do repositionable glue um, adhesive. You can stamp it. I just wanted to get mine, this neckline cut out, just because I want to make sure that my hand prints match up like so okay and then you're gonna this is how this will go on with our two-way glue pen but right for right now I want to make sure I have enough room I don't want to stamp it first because you know God forbid I get it crooked I want to turn it over I don't want to go through cutting circles again so um, I kind of piecemeal it and then see how I do make sure it's really good and inked It just fell off my block, so I hope, and it looks like it's too high up. But let's see if I didn't move it, if we're good to go. Oh, awesome. So, it wasn't quite where I wanted it, but that's okay. This will just make it, which is cool. Oh, it worked out good. I love when you make a mistake, and it comes out okay. <laughs> um, I have switched back to my blocks again, because what I'm going to do is transfer these blocks to the, um, the nice new wood block. Um... And actually, I just bought some right here. Oop, these are the little ones. But I like the wood. I think you don't have problems with the repositioning, them falling off. And it just, to me, takes up a little bit more room. But now with the new packaging, it actually looks nice. And I should probably show you my stamp cabinet one of these days. So you can see what I mean. But let's get started. Let's keep on going. Um, let me go ahead and glue this right on. Because we're good to go with that. It came out okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm running out of room. You should see. I only let you guys see what's in the camera view. You should see what extends. Give me the longest table and I will use every inch of it. All right, so that goes there. Let's get our two-way glue pen and I'm going to glue on this. Basically, I'm just going to go around the edge. Gonna make sure that I have all of that covered. I don't really like this white showing through. Okay, just hold that there for a couple of seconds and then you're just gonna clip off the excess. kind of holding it too at the same time just because I want to make sure my two-way glue pen adheres well. Cute. Now um, open it up just a tad just to make sure you know everything's looking good. Um, it looks fine. I just want to add a little bit more glue under there just because it didn't seem to take as well as I wanted. And let me hold it for a second. I can do this off the camera too, but see how that actually looks a lot better than this side. So I'll do it off the camera. Let's get on with our Cherish the Moments piece. This piece I did with a one inch. I'm just going to make it a little bit longer. And then um, I'll show you what you can do, how you can get that rounded edge. Let's see here. Too high. Nope, perfect. All right. Since this is a one inch piece, I'm going to take my one and a quarter inch circle. Just go up a quarter of an inch just to give you some room. Going to slide it through and bring it. See how I got these corners? That's what I'm creating right here. So you have one end up, and then just make sure your corner is pretty straight. Okay, see how I did that? And then for the other side, slide that back through, bring it on up, and there you go. Now you got this side done. Okay, there is your little piece that goes right here. 
Isn't that a cool technique? So now you can get your rounded edges and not have to worry about, um, and I pop these up with dimensionals. Um, yeah, if I had my dimensionals handy, that would have been nice. There they are. Uh, just pop this up with dimensionals and then this little car, I'm going to do three just because it's kind of a thick piece. Alright. I kind of, yeah, I just don't, don't really like it hanging over too much, which is okay. Alright, so for my handle, it's a seven inch piece. I did use some sticky strip and uh, you know you could have poked a hole and done it through here I just didn't want to give way to this little crease I didn't want it to be um, not as strong and what if you poked your hole wrong and all that good stuff so that is why I, I actually did it on the inside and all I did was I took my t sticky strip I just ran a little piece here and a little piece there Now it's funny because you never know, see how this card, I went in deeper for the neckline because if you notice I have just a very little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch compared to this. Alright, so everybody cuts differently, you might go in too deep, you might not go in enough, so um, you have to allot for those little differences. Now on this card I probably could have. Don't put it on your crease, put it below your, um, when I say the crease, I mean the um, scored line. Put it below your scored line um, just because uh, it w won't fold nicely on the crease. You might want to put it on the top part so you won't see it here when they open it. I've just thought of that now, so, but I already have mine down, so we're just going to keep it as is. Let me see if I can get this off. There we go. What also comes into play, I gave, I'm giving a seven inch piece here for dimension, but if I have a longer threshold here for my, um, my bib, this might make it a little bit shorter, but that's okay. I'm, I'm thinking it'll be okay. All right, so let's see how we did. Oh, that looks cute. Very nice. So there's our card. For our insert, I used the, um, like I said, the designer paper. And if you didn't see the video on how to line yet, all we're going to do is put our piece in here. I used the largest. The envelope die comes in three sizes. Let me see if I have it handy. I know I did. I must have left it over. Comes in three sizes. Um, I cut my paper six by six. The die does make it a little bit, it takes up a little bit more than the six inches, but then you don't, you can only get one envelope liner. So at least out of one 12 by 12 sheet, you can get um, four liners. And then I just fold this over like so. Don't um, put a whole bunch of tape here. You really just want a little bit right here. You want to make sure your lines are lined up. So when it folds over, and then just add just a dab of tape. Because what's going to happen is, when you open it, it's just going to, this whole piece inside will slide up a bit, so it's a little bit giving, forgiving I should say. Um, I tried lining my tape here, and then it buckled. So learn from my mistakes, there you go, so this works out perfectly. Um, thank you for joining me, and here's our little finished project. It's so darn cute. I love it. I uh, will see you again for the next the baby bag. I love that, too. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.